There is a pretty big race to build the next generation engine for space access and travel. 3D printing, reusability, and efficiency are some of the top attributes for an economical space engine. And this has translated into some pretty extreme designs. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the best concepts out there and begin the top 7 countdown. Beginning at number 7, and it's the Smaller Sky Aurora. A Scottish company has rapidly developed an engine for the Smaller Skylark L 200 pound payload rocket. The majority of the engine is 3D printed, and this is made from a high power laser which actually fuses metal powder together. The engine utilizes a hydrogen peroxide and kerosene mix, and will produce over 3 tons of thrust. It also has a built in thrust vector control and regenerative cooling. Now 3D printing is already being used as a rocket manufacturing process by several companies, so it is very likely we will see similar types of engines in the future. We get to number 6 and it's the Vulcane 2.1. The newest version of this engine will feature a 3D printed gas generator, a refined nozzle and combustion chamber which can be ignited by the launcher's ground support system. This engine also eliminates the need for helium since it heats oxygen in the exhaust lines and thus pressurizes the tank. Now this engine is a little bit bigger than the last one and it will produce over 135 tons of thrust and it will actually launch the orbitable Ariane 6 in the first 8 minutes of flight up to an altitude of 200 kilometers or 124 miles. The rocket is also quite large and can carry a 47,000 pound payload into low earth orbit so it's a pretty important development for the European Space Agency. We get to number 5 and it's the enormous solid rocket booster. One of the biggest rocket engines ever built will be utilized in NASA's front-running SLS rocket. The SLS will have the capability to send humans and robotic explorers to pretty far out places including asteroids and even Mars. The solid rocket booster throws out 3.6 million pounds of thrust for roughly 126 seconds. The 17-story rocket burns 6 tons of propellant every second and two of these boosters will provide more than 75% of the total SLS thrust at launch. Aside from creating artificial earthquakes, I can only imagine what power two of these things will do when the SLS takes off next year. Now we get to number 4, and it's the BE-4. Blue Origin is actually one of the front running companies for building a next generation orbital rocket. Their Blue Engine 4 is a big stepping stone for them and it would power the New Glenn along with the Vulcan launch vehicle which is the successor of the Atlas V. In other words this is one very powerful engine at 550,000 pounds of force. It utilizes liquid natural gas which unlike kerosene can self pressurize its tank and eliminates complex systems which involves helium. The engine has a high reusability rate at over 100 launches and it's going to be pushed into flight tests just around the corner. We get to number 3 and it's the versatile Raptor. Yet another methane engine is being developed by SpaceX. This is a pretty important development since the Raptor will power the next generation of SpaceX launch vehicles. The engine is also quite powerful at 430,000 pounds of force and it works by mixing the oxidizer and fuel in the gas phase. Now only a few fully ranged combustion engines existed before this type of engine so it's going to be really fascinating to see how this actually performs. Once again the Raptor should be reusable maybe up to a thousand times which is pretty extreme. Now we get to a very important development and it's called the VASMIR which also stands for Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket. That's a very long title. The next generation plasma propulsion engine is twice as efficient compared to its predecessors. Now the design is actually pretty simplistic and it uses electromagnetic waves to create an energized plasma within its core. And this allows it to have higher efficiencies than a competing ion or hull thruster. So it is worth mentioning that this rocket cannot get you into orbit and it's not like the last rocket engines which I was talking about. It's actually just meant for space travel but it can get you to a destination a lot faster because it stays on for very long durations. 
And there's even one bold prediction which says that the Vasmir could reach Mars in 39 days, which would obviously change the accessibility of our neighboring planet. But the problem is, is that it would require over 200 megawatts from a powerful nuclear reactor. And this exemplifies the importance of nuclear fusion, or maybe some type of other energy source which can power these crafts. Because if we have megawatts of power, then these types of engines become really feasible. So before we get to number one, I'm just going to do an update about an engine which I talk about all the time. And it's the Sabre. The air breathing rocket engine will eventually combine elements of jet flight, along with rocket propulsion for speeds up to Mach 25 which would allow you to get into orbit. Now, a very important milestone was achieved just recently, with its pre-cooler passing initial tests at hypersonic speeds. This is a critical component, since air enters in around 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, and it has to be rapidly cooled in just a fraction of a second. There is still a long ways to go, but the Sabre could be one of the most revolutionary rocket engines ever built. Well, at least until we can figure out how to warp space-time. Now we get to one, and ironically it's the Aeon one, and some of you already know this was going to be included, but I still think it's a very important development. The 95% 3D printed Aeon one is an oxygen methane engine, which consists of only 100 parts, and that is a fraction of any other comparable rocket engine. This also means that its build time is cut drastically, and therefore its production costs are cut down which is really important because space accessibility, as we all know, is really expensive right now. So this engine will power a 1200 kilogram payload rocket into low Earth orbit, and it already has undergone 100 test firings. Now, this is not the largest rocket engine ever built, but 3D printing, more specifically additive manufacturing, can revolutionize how we even build rockets and help make space access become more affordable. So it's a really important development and hopefully the rockets can be a success. So once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.